Today I'm going to show you how to move an object around the screen while shooting enemies on a touch device. What's up guys? In my last video I showed you how to move an object and shoot enemies using the inputs on your keyboard. But I want to show you the same exact thing using a touch device. So go ahead and open up Unity and let's get started. Most of the elements in this project have been covered in previous videos, but that is just because I want to illustrate the content covered in this video. Currently, I have a project set up where asteroids are deployed on the right side of the screen, and if they impact with the spaceship, the scene restarts. Our goal today is to move the spaceship by touching and dragging the left side of the screen and shooting projectiles at the asteroids by tapping the right side of the screen. All of the code needed can be copied and pasted from our website, or if you're a Patreon subscriber, you can download this entire project from the Patreon portal. Okay, let's begin. The first thing we want to do is create a new C Sharp script called Joystick Shoot. Then go ahead and drag it onto our camera and open it up in the editor. The first thing we want to do is create two functions. The first, let's call move character. And for a parameter, let's set a vector to called direction. This will hold the code we need to move our spaceship, but we will come back to this later so for now, let's just write to our console by writing debug.log and then in parentheses put direction. The second function is called shoot bullet. This will be executed whenever we want to fire a projectile from our spaceship. Again, we will come back to this later, but let's write debug.log and then let's put fire in the parentheses. Then up at the top, let's define two private references. The first is a private vector two called starting point. This will store the position of our finger on the first touch. The second is a private integer called left touch. This will store the finger ID of the finger that touches the left side of the screen. As a default, let's set this equal to 99. We do this because the default of an integer is zero and the first finger ID is usually defined as zero. In the event that the first touch is on the right side, we want to avoid the left touch equaling the same finger ID as the right touch finger ID. Normally it's better to store touches in a list like covered in my multiple touches video, but in order to keep things simple, we will just use an integer for this video. Then in our update function, we need to create a while loop to loop through our touches. First, let's define our increment by writing int i equals zero. Then we write while i is less than input dot touch count and then close the loop. Using shorthand, let's define our current touch by writing touch t equals input.getTouch, and let's put i in the parentheses. Then we want to check to see which phase this touch is currently at. There are three different touch phases we want to focus on in this video. Touch phase dot began, touch phase dot moved, and touch phase dot ended. Touch phase dot began is referenced on the first frame that a finger is pressed onto the screen. Touch phase dot ended, like its counterpart, it's referenced on a single frame the moment a finger is removed from the screen. And when a finger changes its position from the last frame, that is when touch phase dot moved is set to true. So then let's write our three phases as if statements by writing if t dot phase equals touch phase dot began, then else if t phase equals touch phase dot moved, and then else if t dot phase equals touch phase dot ended. The first thing we want to do is check if our touch position is on the left side or right side of the screen so we know which function to execute. We can do this by writing if t.position.x is greater than screen.width divided by two. If the statement is true, this means we press down on the right side of the screen and we want to execute our shoot bullet function. If it's false, it means we touch the left side of the screen, so we want to initiate our mobile joystick. The first step for that is to define our left touch to equal our current finger ID, or in this case, t.fingerid. It's also important to store our starting point, so let's write starting point equals t.position. Although this is actually not correct. t.position is a point in screen space, and we need to convert this value to world space. In order to do this, let's create a new function that will return a vector2 called getTouchPosition. And for the parameter, let's pass a vector2 called touchPosition. Then we're going to write return getComponentCamera.ScreenToWorldPoint. Then in parentheses, let's write new vector3. And for the x parameter, write touchPosition.x. And for the y parameter, write touchPosition.y. And for the Z parameter, we want to use the camera Z position. 
So let's write transform.position.z since the script is attached to the camera's object. This line of code basically takes our touch position, which is in screen space, and converts it into a position in world space, so we can use it to calculate where our spaceship needs to move. We're going to use this value in multiple places, so let's just define it at the top of our while loop by writing vector2 touch pos equals get touch position, and in parentheses put t dot position. Since the x and y axis are reversed from screen space to world space, we need to flip the values by then multiplying by a negative one. I plan to make a video explaining this further, but for now, just do exactly as I do. Okay, now for the easy parts. Now that we have our touch position in world space, let's change our starting point to equal touch POS. Since our bullet is only fired when the screen is tapped, we only want our touch phase that moved and touch phase that ended statements to render if we are touching the left side of the screen. To make sure this happens, let's use two ampersands to indicate a second parameter to our if statement. And let's check to see if left touch equals t.fingerId. This changes the statement to make sure both the touch phase is moving and the touch is on the left side of the screen. Let's then do the same for the touch phase dot ended statement. For the touch phase dot ended statement, we just want to erase our left touch ID, which we can do easily by setting left touch equal to something like 99. Then lastly, for our touch phase dot move, we want to use the code we use for our mobile joystick video. Basically, we figure out the offset between the first touch and the current touch to get the direction we want to move. We calculate this by writing vector2 offset equals touch POS minus starting point. Then we want to bring this value to a number that is similar to a joystick value, which is an x and y value between negative 1 and positive 1. We can do this by using clamp magnitude, so let's write vector2 direction equals vector2 dot clamp magnitude, and in parentheses let's write offset, and for the second parameter let's write 1. Then let's move our spaceship in this direction by writing move character and in parentheses write direction. And lastly, and most importantly, let's increment our while loop by writing plus plus i. Without this line, our while loop will run indefinitely and crash our scene. To test the script, I'm going to use the Unity remote app on my iPhone. Link for this is in the description. If I tap the right side of my screen on my iPhone, the console will say fire. And if I tap and start dragging my finger on the left side of the screen, I should see my direction in the form of an x and y coordinate between negative 1 and positive 1. Now for the fun part. Let's start by moving our spaceship. Back in the editor, let's write public transform player to define our spaceship. Then write public float speed and let's set a default to 15. Then in our move character function, let's just use translate to move our spaceship. So write player.translate and in parentheses put direction times speed times time dot delta time. This will move our spaceship in the direction our finger is dragging at a speed which is defined by our speed value. Then for visual reference, let's activate our joystick circles on the screen. We have two objects, one for the joystick and the other for the outer circle which holds the joystick circle. So let's define both in our script by writing public transform circle and public transform outer circle. Then we're going to move the circle object in relation to the outer circle and the direction we want to move our spaceship. We can do this easily by writing circle.transform.position equals new vector2 and in parentheses write outer circle.transform.position.x plus direction.x. And then in the y parameter write outer circle.transform.position.y plus direction.y. Back in Unity, drag our spaceship object and both our circle objects into their places in the inspector and press play. We should be able to now move our spaceship using the left side of our screen. The next thing we want to do is fire a bullet from our spaceship. We covered this in detail in our last video, but basically we created a bullet prefab which moves at a constant rate to the right side of the screen until it either impacts with an asteroid or leaves the scene. Upon impact, this prefab will spawn an explosion animation and will remove all colliding objects from the scene. So the only part we have left to do is to load a bullet prefab onto our scene in the exact position of our spaceship at the time we tap the right side of the screen. To do that, we need a reference for our bullet prefab, so let's write public game object bullet prefab. Then in our shoot bullet function, let's clone our bullet prefab using instantiate by writing game object b equals instantiate and in parentheses write bullet prefab and then set it as a game object. 
Now that we've created a clone of our bullet prefab, we can modify its position by writing b.transform.position equals player.transform.position. Then lastly, back in Unity, go ahead and drag our bullet prefab into the inspector. And there you have it. You can now move your spaceship using the left side of the screen and blow up enemies by tapping the right side of the screen. To copy and paste source code in this video, visit our website, pressstart.vip. And if you have any questions about this video, or if you're having trouble implementing this code, you might want to consider becoming a patron, where you will have access to my personal priority-based email. And with that, we can work one-on-one -on -one to help solve any problems you may have. Lastly, if you found value in this video, please consider subscribing and go ahead and press the like button on this video so that the video gets more views and helps more people.